So you might be wondering why I'm playing this game, Grotato. This game's actually pretty awesome. If you haven't played it, I'd definitely check it out. But my main thing is, is I actually want to showcase sort of what I was going for in this demo that I'm about to run through, where I'm actually trying to replicate some of the functionality of this using Unity 3D, building a 2D game, and Claw 3.7 Sauna in um, Cursor. So the idea behind it is like, I want the weapons to kind of aim themselves. Like I don't have to do anything. I'm just walk, moving the character around. You can have up to six weapons that point in different targets. So let me go ahead and jump in to show you what I've landed on after a couple hours of work. All right, so this is Unity 3D. I put together, I pulled in some like uh, free assets from the asset store here. Um, and I've got like six weapons attached to my character, which is what you would end up with in Brotato eventually. And they are each actually firing. One of them's like a laser weapon. You can tell the weapons are kind of colored, but each of them move independently of one another to kind of hit the enemy that it's that's closest to it, that's actually within its range. The big guys are actually boss guys, and they have a crap ton of life. So I'm, I think I'm going to die here in a second. I don't actually have the end screen, like the death screen actually hooked up. Uh, but you'll actually notice like the zombies will actually play like a little dead animation when they die. Uh, I'm totally going to get cornered here. Let me see if I can get around the other side. But this is what I'm going to go through and kind of show you how I built. All right, so let's jump into the building of this game. Well, everybody, I've bitten the bullet and I have set up Cursor. For those of you that don't know, I actually know Unity 3D incredibly well. I have not been as active with the recent ones, but if you look here, I was a technical reviewer of several books. So here's one that I did. I also technical reviewed this book, getting, Building an RPG with Unity 2018 Second Edition. And I've built probably 50 or so games that have actually been published on the App Store or actually on consoles with Unity 3D. So I know it really well. I'm going to be able to guide it pretty well. But I have an objective for a game that I want to make. And if you don't know this, Unity 3D, a lot of the things you can do, you can do programmatically. Now, it is a very user-friendly interface. So you, there's a lot of click and drag that's available here. But I'm going to see like how much I can do without having to do too much like clicking and dragging and creating stuff in the scene itself. I'm going to start with a game manager. I've created a single script that is empty and I've put it in my sample scene. I've set up the scene to be a 2D environment. So you can see here I've got my main camera and I've got my global light 2D. Now I'm going to kick it off and we're going to see what ends up happening. All right, so unfortunately I have to speed up this part of it. So this is the after, after the fact. I actually do have audio over the entire thing. If anyone's interested, I can post that. But anyway, what I've got happening here is I've got my first version. The camera is actually following the player here. So I would, you might have seen me like look kind of confused there because I felt like the player was moving backwards, back to center after you let go of it. And I'm kind of getting frustrated, but it's honestly not what's happening. The the player's moving, the camera's following it. I didn't want a camera to be following it, so I assumed when I told it a top-down game that it wouldn't make it that way. But once I discovered that, it was fine. I ended up telling the, the AI a bunch of times, hey, it doesn't look like the player's moving. And I had to actually go in and manually change that code to get it to work. So here you can start seeing I've got like a floor texture in, and that's starting to look a little bit better. You just saw that in the previous clip there. But then I do an update where I'm like, add some enemies and get some weapons, and I lose the floor texture and a bunch of other things. You have to kind of like work with the AI to bring some of that stuff back. Uh, but it's starting to feel pretty good. I still really wanted like the user to be, the player to be bigger and the enemies to be bigger. So I kept working with the AI to actually get that to happen, to make them larger. And you can see here, I'm actually going through the code now, trying to figure out how that transform is actually being set. The problem it had is there were, the AI does a good job of like setting the, the things at the top of the class. So you can configure them in the editor. But then it will spawn something and then override the data. So basically, it was negating the defaults up ahead. So anyway, now I'm actually saying I want to uh, do some work with the weapons. So I'm trying to get the weapons to work a little bit better now. You can kind of see here that big red thing, by the way, is a boss. I didn't actually know what that was for a little bit of time. I actually had to dig into it and figure out what it is. Luckily, it spawned outside the screen. Sometimes it'll spawn like directly on top of me and then I can't move because it's just so giant. I love that it just made this like boss guy that like comes in. It's like 
got 4,000 health or something ridiculous. You can see here, it is shooting kind of projectiles there, but it's actually not working good. Now, you're starting to see the gun come together a little bit more there. So he's actually got the gun off to the side. I'm actually going to go ahead and, like, create my prefab of it because I just feel like the AI is struggling, like, getting things set up the way I want. So I'm configuring the prefab, and I'm setting that up to spawn. And now I'm actually going to work with uh, the AI to to go through and set it up so that when the player spawns, his size is correct, and he's got all his weapon loadout and everything set on it. And then this, this part right here, what I'm actually doing is I'm making it so that the projectiles don't hit the player. Because right now you could tell when you're moving around that it's interacting with it. So what they end up doing is they do a layering, which is exactly what you should do. You should you should have your game objects on different layers, so then you can control what collides with what. It's like the perfect way of doing it. I was very impressed. I did have to go through here and manually add the layers. No big deal. You see here, I've added the enemy layer, the player la layer, and the projectile layer. And we actually have... Um, the weapon firing now you can kind of see that i was getting an error so i opened up visual studio code or visual studio because that's what i opened when i clicked on it but anyway like look at that movement's coming around damage is starting to come into place i was actually trying to determine if i was doing damage and i was it's just the enemies had so much health that it was just crazy so now i'm like all right i want five additional weapons let's do this we're going all in at this point uh but then this was good, right? But I don't, it's not the look that I wanted yet. Like they're kind of like all like in the middle of me. I kind of want them out floating around like they are in Brotato. And then I hear that big guy spawned in. I'm like, I got to see what this thing is. So I, look at that. Now it's starting to come together. My projectiles are going good. Um, I actually really wanted to start making the projectiles a little, little bit faster. So then I gave it a, gave it a, like a, a good job, Claude. I want to make sure it knows that I'm happy with the way it's doing right now. So I told it to like change the boss, and I just tweaked a few other things. This is the other thing I was doing a bit. Oh, before I go there, look at this. This is the boss that's coming in. Now I'm getting trapped in that corner there because so many bosses like came around me. Uh, and I'll work on that later. Projectiles are still way too slow. I know in the sped up mode they look great, but imagine this five times slower. They're like incredibly slow projectiles. So I'm going to work on that quite a bit and like actually get them to speed them up. And you can actually see I'm doing that in some of the prompts right now. And it worked eventually. But again, this was one of those problems where the AI was overriding it in several places. And that really drove me nuts because you should really only set that in one place. And then you shouldn't override it again when you're creating the projectile. Unless you have like another setting, unless you're using a setting that's set somewhere at the global level, or at the class level, rather. See, look at this. I'm now telling it the... Don't, that doesn't seem any faster. Please make the projectile speed go up. What's funny is it kept changing the default so high that it was absolutely insane once I finally figured out what it was. Ultimately, though, I had to like go in and make changes to this manually myself to get it to work, which is unfortunate. I spent way too much time fighting like with some of these like goofy things like projectile speed. But again, if you don't know what you're doing here, um, it's totally fine. Like you're you're gonna have a good time like just playing around with AI and getting it to make a game for you. So I, we have some logs now, and I'm like, it's still speed 12. It should be high. And the look, it finds that when it configures the weapons after it spawns, now look at the projectiles because of the speed up. You can't even see it anymore. I also like the effects that it's kind of added. Those like pink, like particle-y effects. I didn't even tell it to do that. It just kind of did that on its own, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, and here's another problem that I ran into. I wanted to spawn a lot more enemies. And this was another problem where it kept, you could set it at the top level, which you would think would be fine. But check this out. No enemies are coming. And actually it broke because I'm missing a tag. So I actually needed to go in and like update a tag, which is fine. I. I saw that and I just did that right away for him. So here I'm adding that tag for collectible. And what that is for, I misspelled it, so I'm fixing it. So I can pick up the green money that's being dropped on the ground. And I'll, I'll kind of walk through that here in a second. So I'm actually picking up that green money. You can kind of see it glowing. I probably should spend a little bit more time making that more noticeable. But at this point, you know, I'm just using basic shapes. I'm doing so much damage now because I got all these weapons and they do different damage and different speed and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm just showing that I pulled this asset pack from the Unity Asset Store, and I want to actually start pulling in these sprites. I want to have like a farmer. I really did want to get it animating, but 
honestly, Claude did not understand how to navigate the animations, and I was already probably an hour and a half, maybe two hours into this already. I wanted to set a one hour goal, but I just, I wanted to get something like really cool by the end. So I kept going on it. So here I'm playing around again with the sprite animation, trying to get that working and see, it's saying that it's doing it, but it just doesn't. So here I'm actually checking it and I'm gonna try to like override it myself manually um, on the actual player uh, prefab. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm gonna actually do is I'm telling it that I'm doing that and I, and I also create the six prefabs for the weapons. Prefabs are, again, I haven't used Unity in the last maybe year or two, but prefabs are amazing. It allows you to basically create an instance of, with all the com combined behavior, you know, all the, the settings, the visuals and everything. Oh, look at this. It's actually working now. So I've got it actually showing the weapons right. Starting to come together. At this point, I was like super excited. I'm like, please just spawn more enemies. It's not hard enough right now. And so then it started cranking the numbers up again. And it would uh, crank the wave number. And then here's another thing that it would try to do a lot of times. It would say something like, hey, now let's run the game. And then it would do like a CD command. It's weird. It's like it doesn't understand how to navigate like a Unity project very good because you can't run it that way at all. So it, maybe it's just some more training that needs to happen to make it work with the Unity project. So at this point, I'm like, all right, I need to go figure out how the spawning is actually working because clearly after five attempts, the AI is not going to figure it out. And I found it. They were, so did you see that? Like it was just a ridiculous number of enemies spawning in. And that's because it had changed the default numbers, but was overriding it. So now I'm like lowering it a bunch here, making them spawn further away from me and trying to tune it. Tune it. And like, look at this. This is like starting to get like super cool. Uh, this is like those late game potato levels where there's just so many enemies. I'm just going to play it a little bit while I talk about my closing thoughts here. Um, I actually don't think Claw 3.7 and Cursor work super great for game development. It's not bad, but there were several times where it totally just lost track of what I was doing. Uh, to the point where I actually had to go in and manually do it. So... Some of the stuff like setting up the sprites and things like that I needed to manually do. But to be totally fair, a lot of the things in the Unity editor is really like a click and drag interface. I mean, it makes sense that certain things just aren't, it's not going to be good at. But cert, but I really did think it would be able to like find sprites and load them, but it couldn't do that. And then one of the times that, one of the most frustrating times was when I was just trying to increase the number of enemies on screen. And what it kept doing is it had like, enemy stuff in three different areas and it was never changing the right thing and it wasn't cleaning up the old code so i had to go through and just kind of rip out a bunch of stuff and manually make that update i do think that if you don't know how to work with unity 3d it's going to be great for you because it'll at least like walk you through the steps of things you need to do and i think you'll have a good time like building games on it and i mean this is a fairly solid like mechanics of games like i've got you know, scoring working, you could collect money so you could actually have upgrade screens between waves are increasing. So it's not like a, I wasn't able to do like great stuff, but I don't know um, if you don't know how to use Unity 3D, if you'd have been anywhere near as fast as what I was on building this. And I think that's okay. I just wanted to do this experiment to kind of understand how AI works with Unity 3D. And I, I think it's a really good learning experience. And I don't think AI is going to be replacing game developers anytime soon. But I do think it could actually help them develop a little bit faster. You know, if you're working on, like, the logic part of it, it works really good. Or if you if you have a lot of the things kind of configured in the editor and you just want it to kind of fill out some of the code, I found it working, like, really good. Because, like, look at the, the gun mechanic and stuff. Like, all of that was Unity. Like, all the pointing and aiming. Like, that was great. I didn't have to spend a single minute on that. And each of them are behaving independently of one another. And the projectiles and the collision and all that stuff's working uh, really well there. So anyway, I, I hope this video has been interesting. Um, I'd love to know if any of you have actually tried working with Unity 3D and, and AI and if, what your luck has been on it. Uh, in this particular one, I think it turned out pretty well. I've got, a, I think, a fairly solid looking game that's kind of fun to play. I love this mechanic that Brotato put together. Uh, if you haven't checked that game out, you definitely should. It's a game that me and my kids play together way too much, probably, just for fun. Um, anyway, this has been a 
awesome learning experience for me. And hopefully it's been helpful or at least entertaining for you as well. All right, until next time, peace out.